Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel, and in this video, I'm going to give you three easy tips on how to improve your audio quality for online meetings or recordings for free using just your laptop computer. And this doesn't require any specific tools or special microphones or equipment. I'm not going to recommend you buy a new microphone, nor does it require the use of any special computer software. It does require that you don't use your AirPods for your microphone. And if you want to find out more about why, watch that video. But really, all this requires is that you, number one, think about where you are located in your home or office and the size and ambience of the room you're in. Number two, if you can choose a different space or change the sound within that space by maybe adding some sound absorption materials. And number three, proper use and placement of your microphone, even if that microphone is just your laptop mic. Because it's not always about the equipment you have, but how you use what you do have. So again, I'll assume in this video that most of you are just using the onboard mic on your laptop, but the audio tips remain the same no matter what mic you're using. And these tips will certainly outlast our current demand on virtual meetings in 2020 and 2021, because sound is just physics and physics isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And I'm willing to bet recording audio and video isn't going anywhere anytime soon either. So these methods will always apply when picking your space for an online meeting, a YouTube video, an audio recording, or even just a phone call. So let's talk about how to get better audio with what you already have. Now, what almost everyone has is a computer, most likely a laptop computer, because that's how a lot of people have been working the past year, sitting in front of their laptops. And of course, you probably have a smartphone. Both of these devices are portable, which is important because it means you can take them to another place say within your own home, to get different and often better sound. And here's tip number one to improve your audio for free. Pick a room with as little reverb as possible. And no, I don't mean echo. I mean reverb. You'll have to forgive me because I'm actually in professional audio for a living and have been for a long time. And most people refer to the room as being echoey, but that's just not correct. Because an echo is a distinct duplication of sound, like this, like this, like this, like this like this. You know, like those old cartoons or movies where you've seen someone that yells into a canyon and then hears themselves back a few seconds later. Hello? Hello? That's echo, when you hear yourself back a second or so later. Generally, what you're referring to when you say your room is echoey is most likely reverb or reverberation. 99% of the time, your room is too reverby, not echoey. Because reverb is similar to echo, but reverb is more of a blended, extended, elongated, big sound that can drown out your voice. You see, reverb consists of all of these hundreds of tiny bounces of sound off of all of the surfaces in your room, so much so that you can no longer hear each individual bounce, and it all blends together and creates that extended or elongated sound, and that is reverb. Like when you're in a subway station, or your master bathroom, or a high school gym, or an airplane hangar or even your large living room with vaulted ceilings and hardwood floors. Those spaces sound big. That elongated large sound is reverb, not echo. So use your terminology wisely because I think it's important to know the proper terminology so that you can not only explain your issue, but also so that others, possibly audio professionals, can assist you in fixing your issue. And every room has some amount of reverb, some amount of ambience. But when you have a room that has too much reverb, almost everyone on the other end of the call knows it because that reverb gets captured in your mic and goes into the recording or the meeting. And the size of the room doesn't always matter. Some very small rooms can have a lot of reverb and some very large rooms can have very little. It's like when you can always tell without seeing it with your eyes and only listening to it that you can hear that someone may be in the bathroom or in their kitchen or a similar sounding room. Why? Because hard surfaces like tile, glass, porcelain, concrete, hardwood floors, laminate floors, all those hard materials reflect sound very well. They bounce it around all over the room and make your room reverby. On the contrary, soft materials like carpet, curtains, blankets, furniture, pillows, and even clothing, all of these types of materials absorb sound. So the more soft goods you have in a room, the less reverb that room will have because the soft goods reduce the amount of times a sound can bounce around, they literally absorb the sound and block it from hitting those hard surfaces. It's all about the sound of your space before you put a microphone in it. And the more reverb a room has, the more drown out your voice is going to sound within that space. And that's probably one reason you came upon this video. 
So you want to start off by being in a less ambient room or less reverberant room to start. Sometimes going to a smaller room can help, but even small rooms can have a lot of reverb. But you can start by choosing or testing a room with shorter ceilings, a room with carpet, possibly some curtains, rugs, and maybe even some specific sound treatment. Even furniture like chairs and sofas can help absorb sound reflections. Listen to your room as you stand in the middle and talk. Does it already sound reverberant? Does it sound echoey? Even though I cringe at that term. Does it sound like a bathroom? Does it sound like a big room? Does it sound like a small room? Does it sound like a room with a tile floor? Or does it sound like a large room with carpet? Think about it and pick a room that sounds smaller and has less reverb or sounds less echoey. It's that simple. Although I'd much prefer you call it by its real name, reverb. And that brings us to tip number two, treat your room. And I don't mean to a night out on the town, I mean by possibly adding some materials that can help absorb that reverb. So if the room that you have to be in already has too much reverb, but that's the space that you just need or want to be in for your online meeting or recording, then think about treating your room. That is, think about ways you can dampen the sound or block the sound waves or absorb them. Soft goods absorb sound waves and simply block them from reflecting off of the other hard surfaces that may be in the room. Soft things like carpet, curtains, blankets, pillows, all of those types of materials will absorb sound waves and reduce the amount of reverb in the room. And again, this doesn't mean you have to buy any specific sound treatment supplies. It just means, you know, maybe add a rug, add some curtains, add soft pillows, add things around the room that can absorb sound. You could even add blankets on makeshift stands directly around your laptop setup to help reduce reflections. Typically, this would be a temporary setup, as you may not want blankets on stands around you all the time, but for special meetings or recordings, it can help you sound a lot better. And as long as they're not in your camera view, nobody will know. But depending on how thick the blankets are and their placement, it can make you sound better and keep the microphone from picking up as much reverb from the room. So think about things you can do to soak up some of those reflections in your room and remove that reverb. So the materials in the room and other treatment methods are why my voice sounds like almost nothing but my voice in this space. Because my home office is not only carpeted, but I also have canvas paintings on the walls, curtains on the windows, I have a couch and some pillows in my office actually, and some sound absorption panels, those back there. All of those materials are soft and they absorb sound waves, or at the least they stop the reflections from moving around the room. I have chosen and treated this space because I don't want to sound like I'm in a big room. I don't want you to hear the room, I want you to hear me. So believe it or not, the room that you're in, how big that room is, and the materials within that room are either going to help or hinder your audio quality. And the less the sound bounces around before it gets to the mic, the better your voice is going to sound. And that brings us to tip number three, microphone placement and your proximity to that microphone. So obviously to hear me or to hear you, you'll need a microphone. Well, microphones are dumb. They have no idea what you're trying to pick up when you turn them on, they're just on. And just like your ears, a microphone is going to pick up something that's closer to it better than something that's further away from it. So still assuming you're using just your laptop, you'll still need to be relatively close to your laptop or actually the microphone built into the laptop. And this applies to any external microphone you have connected to your computer as well. If the mic is too far away from you, it just isn't going to hear you as well and it will pick up more of the stuff that you don't want. Now, as far as laptops go, and again, using just your laptop, some laptop microphones are getting pretty good, especially Apple MacBook Pros. But those microphones or laptops, again, still need to be close to you to be effective. Because again, the further away the microphone or laptop mic is from the intended sound source, AKA your voice, the harder it is for that mic to pick up what you want it to pick up. And therefore the mic will literally hear more of the room to try to adjust the overall level to hear you. So it will pick up the reverb of your room. So I can't stress this enough. You need to be close to the microphone which most of us will be because we're sitting in front of our laptops. That is, of course, if you use the laptop in a traditional manner of having it sit directly in front of you. I, on the other hand, when I'm at my desk, I always have my laptop on a stand pretty far off to the side because I like it connected to a docking station so it connects all of my peripherals. This places the laptop and therefore the microphone on that laptop pretty far away from my mouth, and that will greatly and usually negatively affect the sound going into that mic and therefore into Zoom, 
Microsoft Teams, or any other online meeting software or audio recording software. Because it's all just physics. The microphone on my laptop in my setup is simply further away and will always sound further away to people on the other end of my video call. That's why when I'm at my desk, I don't use the onboard laptop mic. I have a separate dedicated microphone, this one, but this video isn't about that. It isn't about adding specific microphones. It's about how to get better sound for free. For the sake of this video, again, we're assuming that you'll be using just your laptop directly in front of you. So to reiterate, when the microphone is further away from your voice, it will pick up a lot more of that room sound or the natural reverb of that room. And the more reverb present in your space, the more your voice can sound drowned out. So get your laptop or microphone close. Again, you don't have to be right here up on the laptop like this. As long as it's sitting right in front of you, it'll do just fine. But if you're like me and your laptop is on a stand further away, just remember that it's going to negatively affect your audio quality. So those are three ways to improve your audio for free for online meetings or audio recordings. So again, number one, choose a room or space with as little reverb as possible. Number two, think about putting specific sound treatments in your room. Even blankets and pillows can help. And number three, keep your microphone or laptop close to you. Basically, pay attention to and listen very carefully to your surroundings. Fairly easy tips, and it doesn't cost you anything. All right, hopefully you've learned something here that can help you sound better in your videos, your online meetings, your voiceover recordings, or even your podcast. And remember, it's reverb, not echo, echo echo, echo. Good luck and have fun.